Good morning or good evening, depending on where you are watching or listening to Bandofla around the world. My name is Fevzi Hussein, and you are watching episode 68. So here in the UK, we've finally had the general election and well there was uh quite an incredible um result in the sense that we were expecting to see a labor victory uh, but the scale of that victory um has has been huge um and that's why this episode is called Tory wipeout um there were some uh big surprises as well in that I believe 12 Tory ministers also lost their seats in Westminster, including Jacob Rees-Mogg. Um, <laughs> um, Liz Truss. <laughs> so I can't keep this up. I can't laugh 12 times. <laughs> Um, and many other people, Grant Shapps, um, and these people have uh, paid the price really for being um, politically incompetent and being found out. Um, but I, I wouldn't get too excited if I was you, uh, Labour supporters, because your your vote was um, just marginally up on uh, the last elections. Um, and, um, well, the Liberal Democrats wiped out the Tories in, in the South West. Uh, Labour regained most of the Red Wall. There's one or two surprises in the Labour ranks as well. Jonathan Ashworth, Ashworth lost his seat in Leicester, which um, wasn't entirely a surprise. This whole issue in the Middle East and Labour's really weak position on uh, the Palestine issue um, and not taking a stand in terms of banning the sale of arms to the State of Israel in light of what we're seeing in, in Gaza and in Rafa and, and everywhere else in Palestine has come home to roost a bit. Um, even West Streeting, I mean, I, I predicted before the elections that uh, West Street in may well be the Portillo, Michael Portillo moment of the 2024 general election. And boy, did he come close. Leanne Mohammed in Ilford North uh, was only 500 votes away from confining. Well, I, I guess you could say it's a 250 swing. Um, Wes would have been on a political scrap heap. Um, so a, a real shot across the the bows there. Um, I was really sad to see uh, Pfizer Shaheen uh, lose in Chingford and Woodford Green. Again, I think Labour really hasn't covered, covered itself in, in glory. Um, you know, they paved the way really for Ian Duncan Smith to win a re, you know to achieve a remarkable success really no one was expecting uh, IDS to win um and it's obvious that Pfizer would have walked that election had Labour just stood by her um so Labour uh, and Keir Starmer not only did they um cost Pfizer a seat in Parliament they also helped to make sure Ian Duncan Smith um, was successful in um, being elected. Um, well, listen, there's um, there were some other good news stories. Uh, wonderful to see people like Dawn Butler, Zara Sultana, John McDonald, uh, and many other Labour MPs I've got loads of time for. And Diane Abbott, of course, she has become the mother of the house. In my eyes, John, um, Jeremy Corbyn is the father of the house. Um, I think it's disgraceful how Jeremy's been treated. Uh, and it was brilliant to see him succeed in Islington North. Um, 
I want to also give a, a shout out to my good friend Ertan Karpazla, who stood as an independent in Enfield North. Uh, Ertan actually came third. Uh, I think it's a really respectable uh, show, um, and he st he stood uh, by his principles um, in terms of standing up for for Palestine, um, and you know I think Ertan. You should be very, very proud of what you've achieved, my friend. Um, and hopefully this is the start of a, a political career for you. I'm sure your appetite has been whetted. So uh, good luck moving forward. Uh, what I wanted to do now is, uh, on the back of the elections, I've uh, written a, a short poem, uh, which I want to share with you. Um, and it's called Tories Are Toast. I'm not the most creative person, but I wanted to make a, a bit of an effort because there are some quite serious messages uh, contained within the poem. So I, I hope you uh, enjoy this. So here it goes. Rishi Sunak, mandem wearing designer suits, so sleek and chic. With his cheeky smile and turkey teeth, he thought he'd win with a winning streak. But the voters had another plan. They sent him packing to carry the can. So Rishi got a tanking at the polls. Tory vultures, you know who, are licking their lips. Their Tory credentials gone on the blips. Three million kids in poverty, racism rife in society. We see them. We see them. His policies were a bit too rich. For the common folk, it was quite a pitch. But in the real world, more food banks than McDonald's branches. Zero hours won't pay the rent, never mind a mortgage. So off he goes with a frown and a pout. No longer the Treasury's golden scout. But fear not, Rishi. There's always next time, perhaps a career in Silicon Valley, maybe porn or even grime. We see you, Rishi, we see you. Maggie was bad, IDS, William Hague, the list goes on, David Cameron, go home, Theresa May, not to mention the party in Boris and the Watless Truss. We see you, Rishi, we see you, we see you all. The Tories' legacy is illegal immigration and stop the boats. But you do know, right, that no one is illegal. Everyone is human. And socialists around the world unite and say refugees are welcome here. The Tories are toast. Yay. So for now, let's raise our glasses and toast. The end of 14 years of political pain. 14 years of sorrow. Their silent motto, going after David and feeding Goliath. We see you, Rishi. We see you all. For every dad, for every mum, for every loved one we lost to COVID, we see you, Rishi. For every dying loved one who was not allowed to have their loved ones by their side, for all those funerals where only three people were allowed to attend, while Tories parted and took us for mucks. We see you, Rishi. We see you. I wrote this poem. Um, it was inspired by uh, my friend Bola Omiyeni. Uh, Bola was one of the first victims of COVID. Um, Bola, this is for you, brother, uh, and your family. Okay, um, so serious note there. I, I, I hope that resonates with uh, with many of you. Um, so we have a, a new government in place. We have a number of new MPs. Um, I would like to also place on record my congratulations to uh, Chris Webb, who was successful in Blackpool 
again. Uh, well done, Chris. I know you got elected just before uh, Rishi Sunak called the election, so you had to go through the process again. Um, but you you got a fantastic result getting returned as the MP for Blackpool again. So well done. Um, Lee Barron in Corby. Uh, Lee stood for the first time and was elected as a Labour MP for Corby. Uh, well done, Lee. Uh, and to hear Ali uh, in one of the constituencies in, in Birmingham, I don't want to get it wrong, um, but to hear he's been elected for the second time um, and being uh, these three are all members of the CWU, Communication Workers Union. Fantastic to, to have them in the Houses of Parliament. So I'm going to leave it there. This is a fairly quick episode. Um, what I will say is the European Championships are ongoing. I'm not going to comment on it because this is going to quickly become out of date. Uh, but England are doing rather well, which is not how I commented on uh, earlier on in the tournament. <laughs> But listen, there's going to be a, a subscribe button pop up on your screen. Uh, give us a, a subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter. Um, our Twitter handle is underscore Bandofla. That's B-A-N-D-O-F-L-A. -A. Uh, search Bandofla on YouTube. Subscribe to us there. Um, God bless everyone. Look after yourselves. Keep safe. And hopefully I will see you soon. Take care.